already using Gradle to build your Android apps, uh, maybe having talk about Google Plus might be better for you. But if you're new or interested in Gradle and Android combination, then you're perfectly fine here. Just some facts about me. Um, you can find me on Google Plus. I'm a freelance Android developer for three years, something like that. Um, and on GitHub you can find, for example, the samples from the talk here. Okay, what are we talking about? We will talk about what Gradle is for, or a build system in general. An overview of what the build system can do and what it can't. Details of the features. Some examples. Android Studio, which was introduced uh, this year at Google I.O. And some tips from me for saving you many hours when you start using Gradle. <coughs> okay, first of all, a quotation from the Android Studio project side. Um, <coughs> like that, since the beginning of, of the pre-alpha from the Gradle build system, uh, it says, we are working on a new build system to replace both the build system inside HP and R. So it's going to be a, a combination of the positive features of both of them. Okay, what, what needs a build system? What mm, should it be able to do for you? You, you should be able to easily <coughs> reuse your code and all of your resources. You shouldn't need to copy, paste, and, and re easily reuse the code you write to save time. It should make it easy to create several variants of an application, which is basically a, a free and paste in most cases, or, or other variants. Um, yeah, it costs labor. Um, you should need to, to um, yeah, extend and edit and configure configuration of the build, which basically means in most cases just a, a debug build and a release build. Okay, the elements of, of the Gradle Android build system are product flavors. Uh, I just talked about it quite quickly right now. Um, flavors are basically small changes in, in your code or in your resources. Uh, it might just be something like is in a different package name of your Android app for the free and the pro version, for example. Then there are build types, which are configurations I just talked about, debug and the release. There are build variants, which is basically a combination of both. Flavor groups uh, allow you to group flavors together, for example, for different <coughs> architectures if you are using native code. Then there are source sets, which basically tells the build system where to find your source files, your resource files, your AI DL files, whatever it needs to find. You can tell them where it is. And of course, a big point is testing. And Gradle also takes care of the testing part. Okay, the product flavor. Uh, from the documentation it says, a product flavor defines a customized version of the application built by the project. So that's basically it. The new concept is designed to help with the differences that are very, very minimal, <coughs> as I've already said. That if you just want to disable apps in one version, or if you just want to change the package name, or exchange icons for different language versions or stuff like that. But there are already library projects. Well, those are still there and those are still supported, but, um, well, you can see it as uh, very minimum changes are uh, and product flavors and if you have a, a really big blob of code and 
resources is stuff that we want to use in <coughs> different apps that have nothing in common. For example, Action Bar Sherlock. Many of you will know it. Uh, then you can still use and you have to use library projects. Or if you want to make your library project open source or something like that, like Action Bar Sherlock and other projects, then library projects are still the way to go. What can we customize in those um, product flavors? Basically, you can customize everything, but mostly everything that is in your manifest. Um, of course, not activities and stuff like that, but most of the properties that go in the application tag and the bar. So you can customize the minimal SDK version, the max SDK version, the target SDK version, the code and the name, of course, which is great because you are now you can script those things um, in your build environment. <coughs> you can change the package name and the releasing info, of course. <coughs> so release signing and stuff, <coughs> APK signing, is every, what is integrated in the Gradle build system. Um, you can customize the build config. Uh, build config was introduced uh, back in some updates for the ADT. It's basically a, a, <coughs> a class that is automatically generated for you by the Eclipse system, build system it was. And it contains by default only a flag if it is a debug build or not. But now you can write custom code <coughs> to that build config file. For example, you can integrate the build timestamp or the git revision code or something like that. And you can already customize the uh, NDK filters, but um, the NDK is not supported fully yet. This is, um, I come to it later to the roadmap. And you can customize the tests. Okay, that was it for the variant. Now we have the build types. From the documentation again, the build type allows configuration of how an application is packaged for debugging or release purposes. Well, that's maybe uh, all the, uh, there is to say about it. Um, you should not create different versions with that. It's uh, really only to configure the build process. Um, for different versions, we have to build variants, uh, flavors. Um, but we can customize many things here too. Basically, the stuff that is in the, in the manifest, um, the debug and release flags, we can enable disable programs, which was introduced in the latest update of the Gradle build system, I think, Pro. Now it's implemented. Sorry. Um, well, all the debug signing flags, um, you can add the package name suffix. So, for example, you can tag your debug builds with the package name suffix by dot debug. And you can install them on your device uh, in parallel with your release build, for example. Yeah, and build config, of course. And again, you can provide custom Java code. Um, don't, if you configure nothing for the build types, there is a release and the debug build. Uh, that is automatically generated for you, but as you can see on the left side, <coughs> you can edit it <coughs> to your purposes. Then we have the build variant, which is basically the, the cross product of the flavors and the uh, build types. So when you define no flavor at all, then you have uh, a, a debug build and a release build. If you define two, Flavors, for example, free and the paint app, then you have, of course, four, because you can build the free app in debug mode as well as the paint app in debug mode and both also in release mode. 
Um, I will do a short stops after every line um, for you to ask questions so that nobody gets lost on the way. Any questions so far? Okay, perfect. Okay, we have flavor groups. Um, as I already said, you can group the flavors by architecture, for example. <coughs> for, for other grouping stuff, but the most common group is architecture stuff. So you can customize your code for um, ARM or x86 x, 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 uh, uh, architecture and everything that is elsewhere in your build environment. <coughs> then we have fork sets, which, which will be very important later if we come to Eclipse compatibility and stuff. So basically you can do a custom mapping of your source files, <coughs> like Java code, resources, everything else. It's configured by default for you, for the standard folder architecture, <coughs> structure, uh, but you can reconfigure everything. So, uh, um, <coughs> Some of you have to uh, use Maven uh, and stuff like that. It, is, it has a similar folder structure like that. You have the source um, directory, and under that you have basically the, the categories of source files that you have. For example, Java, JNI, resources. Rest is uh, not to confuse with resources, because resources is for Java resources, which we don't use in Android, basically, and we have the rest directory which is the REST directory that you know from your normal Android development. And another important thing <coughs> is uh, you have the flavors uh, here under your source folder. And you can put in there everything that is um, custom to your specific flavor, and it will override the stuff that is under the main folder. You can override everything, like Java files, uh, resources, images, whatever you want. And we have testing for the big part, and there have been lately many good frameworks, open source frameworks on GitHub also, that give very good UI testing, for example, for Android. And in the past, you had to create a, several, a separate project for a test and link it to your main project and uh, you had uh, two projects to manage and stuff like that. But now it's only one project. And it's part of the main project and simply lies under the test directory. Sort of test. And you can also provide custom tests for custom flavors. For example, <coughs> you can test if in your paid version the OS does appear, for example. Then we have the library projects. Basically, they are similar to every other, other Android project, but there is no product flavor. It's not supported for library projects. So it doesn't make sense. Um, <coughs> there are debug and release builds, but they're not used exactly like a normal Android project. Um, when you build a library project, by itself is built as a debug uh, build, and if you package the library as a block um, with your main app, then it is built in release mode. Um, as a side note, here it is still called block because when I wrote this slide, there wasn't a format for library projects. Uh, but now what there is, it's called AAR, and um, it's official now long time they said, uh, well, this is, this is the format that your library project should, should be packaged with, but please don't use it publicly, it's not finished yet, but now you can use it, and there are many projects on uh, making Central, for example, that already use the AAR project, and you can use it with your Cradle build. The most popular example, most likely, is Actually <coughs> which published the AAR artifact a month ago or so. Okay. 
that what uh, was it about the, the build system? Now we come to the more technical side. So far, any questions? Yeah. separate project into his main project. But if he just copy it into the project and build it with Gradle, the yeah. problem should be resolved. There are no other... Yeah. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So now, Ruby. Ruby is the, the language that the Gradle build files are written in. We can get it uh, here and read the documentation and stuff, but it's, it's very easy to learn if you already do Android development uh, because it's similar to Java. Basically it is Java but with many extensions. Uh, it has the strength of Java but it has uh, additional features that come from the scripting languages. So this is, can you read it? Basically, hello world, print line hello world, that's a Ruby. We will check out the examples later. Maybe I can do this. And now with Gradle, Gradle is the build system that we are using. And Gradle, well, you can read it later. And Gradle should combine the um, positive features basically of uh, Maven, like the repositories, Maven Central, and custom repositories, local repositories. Artifacts and the positive features of ARM scriptability and stuff. Um, and leave behind all the negative features of both, hopefully. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Let's call it. Okay. <coughs> this is basically the Hello World uh, sample and for Gradle. Okay, we have the roadmap for the Gradle project. When I first uh, made this talk, there was a fixed roadmap because we were at 0.1 in version and this went up to 0.5 or stuff. Now we are since, well, also a month or so, we are at 0.6 and I can also talk about 0.7. 0.7 should get NDK support finally. And more Lint support. Lint is already supported, but it should get a, a wider support, better IDE integration and stuff like this. Better test support, yes. We have no MR support right now. <coughs> um, <coughs> there should be support to define emulators, create and start them inside your build file. And you can <coughs> run your tests on multiple emulators that you have defined. Okay. Basically, how did we code in the past? Well, <coughs> the worst scenario is we had multiple projects that we copy and pasted for different versions and stuff. Well, the okay approach was to use library project to make a central point where, central point. where you have your code and you generate multiple projects out of this. <coughs> well, now we have only one project that has it all, the Gradle config and the sources, and from that central um, point project, uh, we can generate multiple final APKs <coughs> and right apps. Okay, now I will show you the samples, and I, I hope we can <laughs> somehow read them. Are the slides available on them? <coughs> yeah. No. Um, later or no? Uh, I will post them um, after, okay. after the presentation. Excuse me, if you shade the window. Yeah. 
can just product flavors. Uh, it's already quite convenient with like plugins. <coughs> yeah, okay. Well, the block on the top is the same as always. And only our Android part is different now. Because what we do additionally to the Hello World example is we define a block called product flavors. And in there goes your flavor configuration. Um, that's an example for when you have an app that you want to publish in the Play Store and in the Amazon App Store, because the Amazon App Store has very special guidelines of what you need to do and what you don't. Um, <coughs> you might have to create a separate version for that. Um, well, you might or you might not want to change the package name of the app that you generated. So, in this example, I simply uh, use the Play Store suffix, and in the Amazon App Store example, I use the Amazon App Store suffix. So, you will have one code, one project, but you will be able to generate both APK files. Uh, 
without any change on your code. Build config example. system I showed it earlier to you and you will have to map those source types that you have Java code resources and stuff to the Eclipse folder structure and then you can move the source <coughs> set block for the main um, part and you have to find where your money shot lies where your Java files lies the line the source and where your resource files lies and the rest and stuff like that. You simply map it to the folder that Eclipse uses. And then you can build projects that come from Eclipse without any change. Okay, how do we handle uh, library projects? <coughs> Basically, there is a settings gradle, settings or gradle file where you can define what project exists in your project build. And you define a line for your main project and for the library projects you want to include. And then later you have the dependencies block, like we had earlier when we included the Gradle artifact for Maven Handler, and you simply uh, add a dependency, a compile dependency as a project and give the path to your library that you want to include. Some more details on, on the dependencies. So basically, you, um, you can include everything that comes from the Maven repository. It also has support for IB repositories and some subsystems that I didn't hear of before. And you can simply define your dependencies uh, by the artifact string. That is basically the group name here and the artifact name and the version. And as I said earlier, the AAR format for libraries is now the default format, and you can include those library projects as a body at IAR um, architecture. And everything that is simple in Java files, you can just include with just one line above. Okay, what can you do if a library is not available in AAR format? Well, basically, you can do nothing right now. But uh, write a custom Gradle build file for the library project and include it in your project as with the multiple, uh, with the project builds that I have utilized earlier. But, there is one 
solution. Um, I have created two months ago or so uh, um, a Maven repository that is hosted on GitHub that you can include. You will find on, on the slides later. Um, it's basically the URL of the <coughs> Maven repository, and you have to include it before the Maven sample part. And what we have done is we are compiling public library projects with a Gradle build file to an AAR artifact and publish it on, on the repository. So if we have already done so, you can include it from here. If not, you can simply write a ticket and we will do our best to include it. Okay, before we start with MWS Studio, questions? Project with us. Um, but what do you do if you come from Eclipse? You have used Eclipse for years now, and now there's Android Studio. Uh, how do you get your project from Eclipse to Android Studio? Well, uh, Eclipse, when you upgrade to the latest ADT version, there is uh, an export wizard for you that can create a gradle build file for you, for your project. And if you do so, you can simply import those files that are generated for you. Those will be the files that are basically the files that I showed you earlier in the Eclipse compatibility example. Um, you will be able to simply import, use the import wizard of Android Studio to get your Eclipse project into <coughs> Android Studio and continue developing with Android Studio. And of course, uh, and automatically generated those files is always perfect, uh, especially when your project is very complex. You might have to tweak it manually, but I didn't have any problems in the past, so the wizard is very good. Um, how do you import a project into Android Studio? Uh, well, simply use the import project with that. <laughs> Basically, that's it. And you have to select the domain build, build, gradle build file, and Android Studio will do the rest for you. If it finds any errors, Gradle build file it will tell you, and it won't import it, and you can resolve the errors, and then the import should work. Well, that will be the scenario. Uh, I, as a freelancer, have it very often that your colleagues will still use Eclipse, and you will use Android Studio. Well, that's not a problem, too, because Android Studio can't even handle an Eclipse project. Uh, of course, you will have um, but basically, you can delete the dot .project and dot .class files that Eclipse generates, or just rename them, or whatever. And then you can use the import wizard of Android Studio to just point it to the folder of your project, and it will find the Java sources and stuff, and the, well, basically it will detect that there is an Android, Android project in there, and it will import it. And it will fall back to some compatibility uh, compatibility mode that will not use Gradle to build, but ARM in the background. Okay. That was the informational part of the talk. Now we come to hints. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, don't you, uh, as based on this product, I suppose they also have some IntelliJ. Yeah, it is based, uh, it's basically it's this IntelliJ, uh, yes, uh, with the official Android plugin. <coughs> yeah. So they also support the Android file as well? Uh, if you use as IntelliJ as instead of Android Studio? Yep. Yes, basically you can, uh, I think you can, I haven't tried it, so I don't mind. Is it possible to simply uh, use IntelliJ with the official Android plugin? So that's what Android Studio mostly is, um, but you won't, uh, you will 
might miss some of the features that Android Studio has. But the build should work, and you should be able to, to work on the project with your normal integrity. Yeah. So basically, having to create a file and then gives you a little bit work on Eclipse, Android Studio, and IntelliJ. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Or you can even build from command line. <laughs> if you use any other IDE. Yeah. Uh, how about the build time when I have one release and one debug build time? Does the build time double or increase, or is it just one build and well, I get my two file? Okay, and yeah. when you uh, build it via the IDE, then you basically tell them exactly which um, which you want to build, <coughs> which artifact and which build type, release or debug. But on the command line, there is also a task called assemble, which will basically assemble all of the artifacts with all of the build types that you have defined. Um, depending on whether you override resources in Java stuff and all of that in, in, your, very, in your flavors and in your build types, um, it might need to recompile stuff or it might not. So if you, if you don't change much but the package name, then it won't recompile stuff for you. Um, okay. The build time shouldn't differ much uh, when you build two APKs out of one source. But it's only one build process yeah. when I build the <laughs> release and debug APK. Yeah. Except that when you uh, uh, why call it why by the ID. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. okay, so here come the hints that will save you many time. Um, you should use Gradle 1.8. By now, uh, let Earlier versions of the Gradle build system for Android will support Android <coughs> 1.7, but for the latest version you should really use 1.8 because you might get really strange errors that you won't understand and they won't make much sense uh, when you use 1.7. Um, basically, uh, Google has published a wrapper for that, which is basically a file that will download the proper Gradle binary distribution for you, so you won't have to install it on every uh, system that you want to build your Android app on. You can simply call the bash file and it will use the Gradle distribution that you have or download uh, a new one and use that one and you can find it in the Android SDK under the tools folder. Simply, you simply copy it to your project and it will use it. Well, if you want to switch to 1.8, you simply have to edit one line. <coughs> because, of course, when you have projects that you have done earlier, it will still say 1.7. Okay. Um, stuff that you might want to add to your GNOME file is not Gradle, which Gradle will. Uh, to store some local configuration for the Gradle build process. It is build, simple to build, where your APKs will go, the compiled Java files will go, and everything like that. There's dot idea, uh, which is the configuration of your IDE, and an out folder, which is generated when you don't use the Gradle build system, but the compatibility mode that I referenced earlier. Um, the priority is stuff that you define in your Android manifest will uh, override stuff that you do in your uh, Gradle build file. So when you haven't configured something in your Gradle build file, then your manifest file will be used. And stuff that you do in your Gradle build file overrates the stuff that you do in your manifest. So you can add suffixes to your package name. Um, one thing that you might get used to is that the lib folder is not automatically included in your build and you have to tell Gradle that your jar, local jar files lie in the lib folder. If you do it with compile dependency, it's called a file tree and you say it's the lib folder and it should include everything that is uh, .jar. Well, if you use the Eclipse compatible way, you will use uh, many of 
of the benefits that the great ability of keeping gives you, like labor, for example. Um, so, but that's the way you have to deal with when you insist on using the exception category, right? Uh, when you use library projects and stuff like that, and you get many final found exceptions, uh, then you might have to manually create the folder that I listed there, but because well, somehow it might be fixed now. I haven't tried the, the example again uh, with the latest version, but somehow Gradle didn't create this folder and the build failed. That's it. Okay, when you use library project, you should place it directly under the root folder of your project. Uh, everything else might get you in trouble. Uh, create very confusing error messages. Uh, manifest merging, some of you might, may know it because it was well, many, many times ago introduced into ARM's build. Um, it's enabled by default, which basically means if you have a library project, you can define your activities and services in the manifest there and you won't have to include it in your specific labor manifest. So basically, if you include some library project, you won't have to redeclare the activities. So in the end, it would lead to, lead to errors if you use it, actually. Uh, especially when you use the Gradle plugin that Eclipse has, might happen that there are two Gradle processes running because some old Gradle process instance is not killed properly or stuff like that. And if that happens, even if your build is fine, if your build script is fine, your code is working, everything is fine, your build won't succeed. Somehow the, the old idle process will lock some resources or stuff like that. It simply won't compile even if everything good in general. So if you have errors that you can't <coughs> make any sense of, check your process manager, task manager, if there are any idle gradle processes running. Um, well, if you convert the project structure to the gradle structure, then basically if your colleagues use Eclipse and they try to open the project, of course Eclipse won't make any sense of the project because it won't find, uh, find any Java sources, it won't find any resources and stuff like that. Um, but uh, there is a possibility for you to still use Eclipse with the Gradle structure. Um, you will have to do a manual build from command line so that Gradle generates all the resources for you. Then you will have to add uh, the source folders where the Gradle sources are to manual, manually to, to Eclipse and also the build file, the debug, compiled debug file uh, resource line. And if you want to include the library project that way, you basically have to include the generated jar file directly. And when you change any resources or stuff like that, Eclipse won't recognize it automatically because the files are elsewhere. You, then you have to do a, a manual Gradle build and refresh Eclipse <coughs> so the changes appear in your Eclipse. And you will have to add the Android Cloud Pub container manually. So better use Android Studio in this case. <laughs> okay. Um, When you want to um, include dependencies in your Android tag in the build file, then you also have to include, uh, re-include that repository this Maven Central part in your Android tag because the Maven Central include uh, that you have above is only for the build script tag and not for the Android tag. So you might get errors. <coughs> Um, that artifacts cannot be found, but it's, uh, but you say, oh, well, I have included Maven Central, what's the problem? Well, it's only for the build script and not for the Android part. So you have to re-include it. Uh, 
that is not so important. And I think it is uh, fixed in the latest uh, 0 0.6 version of Gradle. Uh, a very nice Gradle snippet that James Martin posted is how you can now um, better manage your, your app version. Basically, you have the, the major version, the minor version, the patch version, the build version. And the version name is automatically generated for you by those variables that you define. And also, the version code is calculated by, by those variables that you define. Well, it's a really way to <coughs> keep, better keep track of your app version. Um, if you want to create output, <coughs> find, release APK files, you might want to include the version name of the APK file and the file name. So uh, normally you just get uh, package name, I think, minus release.apk. And you have no, no clue which version that is. So that this is a snippet. Okay, I won't explain that in detail. You can just uh, view it in, in the slides later online. It will basically generate an APK file that has the version name in it. Uh, the problem now is including native code that comes from any library projects that you include. Um, those .so files, you know. Um, they won't be included by default, but there is a, a workaround, let's say a call it. Uh, you simply zip up the files in the list directory and then you replace the file extension of this file with .jar and place it in the libs folder and what Gradle will do, it will think of the jar file that it needs to extract in the build process and will, it will extract the .so files in the proper folder in your final APK file. Another approach is that it here that you can simply copy it to your build file and it will use this Gradle build process to copy all of the SO files in the proper uh, locations on your final APK file. Okay, some resources uh, that you might want uh, to use is softwareandroid.com and the tools build folder. There is all of the source code that uh, goes into the Android Gradle plugin. Uh, mostly all of it, not all of it is open source. You can edit it to your needs if you need. And there's the Google group for a still ADT there because also Gradle questions go in there. And then we have the documentation for the new Gradle build system. And of course the Android Tools project site, which many of the samples came from, as well as all the samples for the Hello World and Eclipse compatibility stuff. And all the samples that I showed you are in the Android Gradle examples repository on my GitHub account for you to copy and paste to your liking. And that's it. That's the end. Any questions? Android Developer Tools, 
and the gradle guys are in the loop. No more class.